start using your SIPAP machine, you need to gather your equipment. So the equipment required is a circuit. So for the CPAP, um, you will need the AirLife single limb heated wire circuit kit. Um, this comes inside the kit. So you've got uh, your water chamber, your tubing, um, and an infant flow system measuring uh, guide. You'll also need an infant flow generator set. These are single patient use. They come with three sizes of nasal prong, large, medium and small. Um, and they come with the um, air delivery set. It has a Velcro uh, T-shape on the back which attaches to a bonnet. In order to size for the correct size bonnet, you'll use one of the colour-coded infant flow tape measures. Um, and you can see the stitching on the bonnets correlate with the colour um, against the size of the tape measure. You'll also need to use the Infant Flow Nasal CPAP System Prong and Mask Sizing Guide so you can hold it against the child's nose and nostrils to work out what size nasal prongs or masks you require. The masks are not included in the generator set and they are um, ordered as individual packs in different sizes. Um, and this is just an example of a small mask here, which would attach to the end of your um, tubing. And you would need your water for irrigation or water for inhalation um, to fill up your water chamber. So here we have our infant flow CIPAP machine. This is used to deliver CPAP to our children on the unit um, and we're going to show you just how to set up the machine correctly and calibrate. So first of all you would leave the machine switched off, you would attach your oxygen and your air to the wall and you would plug in your humidifier and your um, CIPAP unit to the wall. You would have already gathered all of your equipment and prepared everything that you needed so you can begin to assemble your kit. So to begin with, you can get your chamber, your water chamber, and attach it here to the humidifier. Slide it on back. You can remove the orange clip, it's not needed. And you'll see that the spike um, tubing just hangs on the side there. So you can take this out. Spike your bag and hang your bag. If you give it a squeeze, it will start to fill your water chamber. You can turn that on so that it can start working its way up to its desired temperature, which would be 37 degrees. Next, you want to start building your tubing. So there's a a shorter blue piece of tubing with a wide end that goes on one side of your chamber and the plug on the side here should remain closed. The smaller end of the tubing will attach directly to the front of your CIPAP machine. You'll then collect your larger light blue tubing, attach the wide end to the other side of the humidifier here you'll see two ports, so there's the heater port in which you'll see a, a flower-like three-piece prong which attaches into the end of there. And then there's a long grey piece of tubing which is your temperature monitor. The piece in the middle of the tube has a triangular um, section which slots into the chamber. It only fits in one way. And then this blue spike at the end of the wire fits into the end of this tube. You pull the plug out and you pop that in. You then select your remaining piece of dark blue tubing and attach it to the end of the light blue tubing like so. This blue piece of tubing then attaches to the clear tubing on the interface. Like so. You then collect your clear tubing. One white clip attaches to the front of your CIPAP machine 
the other white end attaches to the other open port on your interface. Your SIPAP is now set up and ready to prepare your patient. We just need to wait prior to use for the temperature to reach 37. Now that you've set up all your tubing, the next thing we need to do is to calibrate the machine. So we start by turning it on, uh, the switch is located at the back of the machine. In order to calibrate, we first need to push the calibrate button, turn the oxygen to 21%, turn our low pressure to nine, and our high pressure between two and three, once we've done that, we can push our question mark, the timer will come up and we wait for a green tick. We then turn, once we've got our green tick, the oxygen around to 100, push our question mark, wait for the timer. Now that we've got our tick, we push exit, and we now we now need to do all of our checks. So we can push our question mark. We need to include the uh, nasal area of our tubing to act as CPAP, so we can show that we've got a good seal. And then it was going to do all of its calibrated checks. And we're now showing only one mode, which is CPAP, which is the mode that we want to use. We're now ready to prepare our patient with their bonnet and attach the interface. Now that our CPAP is calibrated and our tubing is all connected, we need to um, prepare our patients with their bonnets. Um, so we start by correctly sizing um, them for their bonnets using a tape measure. You take the tape measure and you'll see there's an arrow at the top of the tape measure. You pop that around the widest part of the child's head, around the forehead, and whichever colour the arrow reaches through to, in this case it's six, is the size bonnet that you would choose. The, each bonnet comes in a, a pack with two grey straps and the grey straps have at the end, have at one end a section with a hole in and that is the section that goes at the front and clips onto the interface. It's useful to pre-thread the bonnet um, because they're really fiddly and if you're trying to do that on the patient's head it's quite difficult. So you would thread from the back the coloured the coloured hole coming up from underneath, making sure that you're threading with the pointy end of the strap, come up, under and up again, and you would use this piece of the strap to adjust the length once it's on the patient. When you fit the bonnet, you make sure the T piece is on the front and you bring the grey straps forward. The baby's ears would be tucked into the bonnet, but making sure that it's not too tight and you're going to cause pressure areas. Now you're ready to measure your patient for their nasal prong and nasal mask and fit your interface to start their CPAP, CPAP treatment. So using the measuring guide that comes in your kit. I will measure the size of the nostrils and also the correct size for my nasal mask. In this case, my patient has got small nostrils for the nasal prong and between a large and a medium for a mask. So I would try a large 
first. To begin with, I would remove the Velcro T-piece from the end of the tubing and attach it to the bonnet so that it's ready in place. I have attached my mask to the end of my interface ready to attach to my patient. And you can see here the two hooks on the side that will hook to the um, holes in the ends of my straps. So I'll begin by first attaching one strap, placing my mask over the baby and securing the tubing into the T-piece. And then bringing the other strap up and attaching onto the hook. At this point I can reposition for comfort, get a good seal. I can adjust the straps to make them tighter or looser. All the tubing should be up off the end, top end of the bed or coming out of the incubator. You must make sure that the blue temperature probe is not inside the incubator or under any kind of um, heat lamps or ultraviolet lights. We should be alternating between the nasal prong and the nasal masks four to six hourly to relieve pressure. We should be doing checks on the ears to make sure that they're not folded over um, or getting too dented by the straps, in which case we can move it up or down slightly and check in the forehead. Um, also checking behind the head as the patients won't be moving very much. Where possible, we should avoid NG tubes as they um, can affect the seal and an OG tube may be preferable. Um, if using an OG, always check the centimetres at the mouth as it's more wet and more mobile than an NG tube. An NG tube might be better on an older baby as an OG tube could affect the tongue movement. We should be doing our pressure area checks along with our alternating of our mask and nasal prong, so four to six hourly. And we should also be re-measuring head circumference weekly for our bonnet um, to see if the patient's head has grown and needs a different size or also if the bonnet has become too slack and they need a new replacement. You're now ready to start your CPAP. If the CPAP is alarming and you've set the parameters correctly, it may be that you don't have a good seal, so you'll need to have a play around with the mask until you've achieved a good seal and a good level of tightness.